If you're new here, my name is Sarah. I'm a PhD student and a small YouTuber. I live in Bloomington, Indiana, and I study rhetoric and composition, and my dissertation actually has to do with YouTube and vlogs and my experience making this channel. So in this video, we are going to get all into the details of both of those things. Per usual, I'm gonna be talking about my dissertation, but I'm also gonna be talking about like what it's like to make vlogs and like the YouTube side of things a little bit more. So that'll be something new that I feel like I don't talk about a whole lot. Another goal that I have for this week is to really stay present and to stay grounded. I have found my screen time going way up on my phone lately and I have found it really, really difficult to just do one thing at a time. I feel like I'm always reaching for my phone or I'm always trying to find something to do with my hands while I'm like watching TV or something. So I'm just going to try and find more mindful activities where I am locked in and just in the zone. I feel like this will also translate into making writing a little bit easier for me. So speaking of writing, I am currently working on my dissertation, as I said. I really desperately need to get my writing stint done for the day because it's already after 10 o'clock and I've just been like finding little ways to avoid doing writing as one does. So I just need to check off the box that I did my writing for the day and I know that I'll feel better. So I have my laptop with me. I think I'm actually gonna go sit at the kitchen table because there's a lot of light coming in from the east side over there and do some writing. Okay, have my cup filled with lots of water. I'm going to put on these noise canceling headphones to block out the washer in the back and I'm gonna put my phone in another room so I'm not tempted to continuously pick it up. Momentary break because I realized I didn't eat breakfast. Okay, it is 12.23. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break just because I'm getting like really antsy. I didn't get quite as much writing done as I wanted to. I got like a couple paragraphs done, which some days a couple paragraphs feels great, <laughs> but I've been working on this same section for a while and I really just want to get this section done. I've been spending so much time just trying to explain how the key principles that I'm arguing come from vlogs, especially embodied awareness and audience awareness, so awareness of oneself and awareness of others, but specifically like in bodily ways, how these principles were also appearing in blogs as like vlogs predecessors. So I'm doing, it's not even an extensive literature review of blogs because I'm really only citing like three or four people, but I just really want to make this writing clear. And for some reason, I just feel like a lot of pressure to like cite people who are talking about blogs because I'm barely citing anyone who talks about vlogs because not a lot of people in rec comp talk about vlogs to begin with. So I don't know, pros and cons in doing a project that feels non-traditional maybe is the word for it, but everyone's project has their own issues and their own like obstacles to overcome. So I really just want to get this part where I'm talking about vlogs done so I could get into the exciting stuff and get into talking about vlogs and like making cool arguments, doing some rhetorical analysis, the stuff that I've been like wanting to write forever. Chapter one was also just like a big literature review of like the field of multimodal composition and this turn towards multimodality and also this emerging field or like subfield of embodied rhetoric and the embodied turn. So I'm just like really sick of literature reviews at this point and I know that's like a lot of what a dissertation is. It just feels like a lot of like posturing towards like, hey, I'm allowed to write this and I know that's like weirdly fueling but like also frustrating my imposter syndrome. So I need to get out of my head for a bit regardless. Um, so I'm gonna go to the post office and mail these shoes. <laughs> you guys have heard me talk about these shoes nonstop. Basically, finish line sent me the wrong shoes. I ordered these Adidas in this super pretty colorway of like beige and tan. They sent me the wrong size. I tried to reorder them, canceled the order. Like they canceled the order because they're out of stock. 
Anyway, I ended up selling them to someone who I know from back home on Instagram. So she is buying them. So I need to sell, I need to go to the post office and mail those out. And I ordered a new pair from Goat, which I've ordered from a couple times before and have had like really great experiences. Um, they're not the same color, but they're very cute. So I'm gonna do a little try on and get out of the house for a second. Okay, here they are. I think they are so cute. They're actually like really comfortable on my arches, which I love. I do have like a wide bridge of my foot. Like it's like right here is really wide. Um, so I got a seven and a half, which is what I normally am. They're a little long. I feel like I could fit a seven that way, but I think a seven would be too narrow. I know that they stretch out. So that's why I'm wearing them with like these taller socks, um, just like around a little bit to stretch them out but I think I would normally wear them with lower socks like that. Um, but yeah, they're really cute. I'm super excited to finally have some. I don't have Sambas or anything. I've been wanting some for quite some time. And while I'm out and about, gonna return this Abercrombie order to FedEx. I ordered a bunch of pants um, and I'm just returning the ones that don't fit. Okay, just took the recycling, went to the post office and went to FedEx to return the Abercrombie order and I'm in the parking lot of fresh time right now because the weather is so nice. It's like 70 freaking degrees and I just want to get a fun little juice. Ended up feeling a little inspired in there. Got some hippies because we love these. Chickpea Cheetos. Two juices because I was like, oh, I think Megan's going to want one. This is strawberry lemonade. Yum. And pineapple. And then I was like, I don't have anything really to eat for lunch. We need to go grocery shopping. So I got this. It's a vegan smash chickpea wrap. But more than anything, if this is good, I feel like this is something I can recreate at home. So excited to give it a try. Not sure what kind of sauces are on it. I fear that there may be no sauce. So I gotta figure that out. Okay, it's about 2.25 now. And I have a meeting with my advisor at 2.30. We meet every other week, sometimes weekly as needed. And we just talk about the progress that I'm making on my drafts and any specific questions that I have about like professionalization things, publishing, conferences, etc., etc. So in my meeting with him today, I plan on talking about what I talked about a little bit earlier, just like how much of this dissertation is supposed to be a literature review and strategies for like moving past this feeling where I'm like, I'm not allowed to actually say anything that comes from my own brain. It just needs to be like citing a bunch of other people. Um, and I think that part of this comes from like my prospectus defense was like really, really difficult. Um, I have used the word traumatizing and I like kind of stand by that. So, I don't know, it just like instilled this like fear in me that like I'm not qualified to make unique arguments. So, I don't know. We'll see what he has to say. Okay, like an hour later, um, I'm feeling good. We talked about some of those obstacles where I was like, I just feel like I'm writing a literature review forever and ever. And he basically was like, get past it. <laughs> because when you defend the dissertation, you are going to be like the expert in rhetoric and composition about like vlogs and embodiment. So get past it. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Um, no, but he gave me some good strategies too. I just like wasn't sure like what methodology I was using. And he was like, you need to solidify who exactly you are analyzing and like what particular videos and come up with a rationale why. And like, I've had a running notepad on my phone forever of like links to YouTube videos with timestamps with like what's going on when they're demonstrating audience awareness or like embodied awareness, or like they make comments about cancel culture or something like that for a while. Also, I'll once again outsource this to you guys. So if you have any videos that come to mind, leave them in the comments. Um, but he helped walk me through how to come up with like a rationale for that. So right now I'm thinking of just doing good old fashioned rhetorical analysis. But he was like, if you feel like you need to cite people to conduct a rhetorical analysis, you could cite some people who define what rhetorical analysis means and then like use their method to go into it. But he was like, when you think about like, when you teach your students to do rhetorical analyses, are they citing people? Like in here, so I know that this is demonstrating ethos. And I was like, no, you're right. But that made me feel like I'm not doing much different than like a freshman rhetorical analysis paper, but I know that that's not true. So I think I'm going to break up 
the categories of video or the videos that I'm analyzing into different categories. So I'm already focusing on lifestyle vlogs, but I'm going to break up lifestyle vlogs by the category of lifestyle vlogs. This is just like really, really early preliminary thinking about this, but I think I'm going to look at like the way that people are titling their vlogs, like day in the life of blank or week in the life of blank, my life as blank. Um, and oftentimes this blank is filled in with like a job description. So of a full-time influencer, of I'm thinking of like Abby Aslan, a big four accountant, formerly she quit her job, God bless her. Um, or Jenna Hong also is, works like I think in accounting. Or like students is a big one. So a lot of mine is like day in the life of PhD student, grad students, undergrad students, college lifestyles, its own niche. Um, then the other one that comes to mind is moms. So I don't watch any mommy vloggers on YouTube. I do on TikTok, but these are really dicey. Um, yeah, for a lot of reasons. And I'm not sure ethically if that's something that I want to include in my dissertation, but he basically was like telling me if that's something I don't want to include, I just like make a comment about it. And like, ultimately this is all up to me. And he was like, think about making it like a grid. So like my X axis is like what? job they have and then the y-axis for like subscriber count because i should not just analyze like full-time influencers with like 100k but maybe think of like with a million followers or five million followers so we're getting like a range of things and then i also told him that it's tough for me because i don't just want to analyze 15 white women but the vlogging space on youtube is really dominated by white women and he was like that's something that you can say specifically if i have like statistics from like youtube or google something that I can cite and explain that um but to know that like it's I'm going to face that issue just because that's the issue like that's a bigger issue like it's beyond me but that doesn't mean that I can't put in the extra effort to try and bring diversity to my case studies so that's something that's important to me and that's like important to the project so I need to keep that in mind as well it also just makes me think about like the people who I'm following um, and this is something I see with my students as they're doing like influencer analyses too. We follow people who remind us of ourselves. We follow people who we see ourselves in, which leads like for me to inevitably follow a lot of white women. Um, but yeah, not that this can't and shouldn't be pushed back against. It's just some things I've been thinking about lately. Um, and also to think about the types of vlogs that my students analyzed in the class that I taught about vlogging, because I have an IRB for that and I'll be talking about that. And he's like, that will be a way to help with the through line from chapter two to chapter four. So we read an article about Jenna Marbles, throwback, she's an OG, and we read an article about Trisha Paytas. So if I could bring in some analysis of their vlogs too, but I don't even know what category they fall under. I feel like they're just like OG YouTubers and they're like their own category. Um, but yeah, I feel good about things. It also made me realize that maybe I'm like really agonizing over this like blog literature review part because I'm like... I'm not ready to be done here because when I'm done with this literature review then I have to like actually go into the analysis and I haven't set boundaries on that yet. So now that I know where I'm going I feel like I can wrap this part up relatively quickly. And we also set some timelines for when I need to have this chapter due and all the other chapters revised and when potentially I would defend which is crazy. I mean I knew it was coming but Everything's starting to feel really, really real. Okay, took a little break, decompressed, watched a 10-minute vlog, and of course had to take some notes on it. Um, but I'm popping back in to say that I have 4K subscribers on YouTube, which is so exciting. 4,000 people. 4,000 people have watched my videos and decided that they were interested enough to subscribe. My boyfriend was actually my 4,000th 4, 4, subscriber. I sent him a picture with that I was at 3,999 and I was like, subscribe. And he was like, oh my gosh, I thought I was subscribed already. So I thought that was very sweet. Okay, tried to do a little more writing, but I just got, I could tell that I was just done for the day. Um, I started to like really just like overthink things. And I was like, we gotta, gotta call it quits. Um, so it's 6.20, so I'm gonna get started on making dinner. It's just chopping a bunch of veggies basically. The veggies with some cilantro and then we put this peanut sauce on it and we also added edamame, green onion, peanuts and then these noodles for like a base. And it's eight o'clock, we're gonna go to our neighbors and watch The Bachelor. Good morning, it's 
it's 8 35. hello good morning happy tuesday it is a little after 11 a.m i currently have a zoom call running upstairs i'm leading my dissertation writing group which i do through the writing center i got like 500 words written this morning i felt really good about that there's a little bit more that i want to finish up or at least give it like another go and if it's not happening it's okay i can touch it tomorrow or thursday but all i have in my stomach right now is coffee so i need to eat something quick for lunch or for breakfast before i check back in with my group at 11 45 we see how we did on our goals etc etc i also think i'm gonna tackle some of the dishes from last night some cinnamon sugar toast i've really been craving this lately i had it as like a snack yesterday too dishes are done okay it is a bit later now it is 2 30 i took an everything shower washed my hair blow dried it used the good good purology shampoo i just had to have myself a moment i started to get really stressed out about how uncertain my future is like that's really dramatic but in terms of what i'll be doing in the fall semester and a lot of things are just like really up in the air right now and it was just like really stressing me out and i found out that if i am teaching next year if fellowships and other things don't pan out then i am not going to be able to teach my influencer course that i'm teaching right now which i adore and that sucks but basically the reasoning is they can't put it on the schedule if it's not a for sure thing that i'm going to teach it because if students register for it i'm the only one who can teach it because it's like my curriculum and if they were to pull the class from students last minute that would like really suck for students like with their schedule so it's really frustrating i wish there was a better system in place but like at the same time i, I get it so yeah um i just have to cross my fingers and hope for the best and trust that everything is going to work out the way it's supposed to work out but yeah i was feeling real stressed so joanna told me to give myself an hour at target so that's what i'm gonna do um i also have to like replace some light bulbs so i had to go to target anyway and while i'm out i'm gonna do some grocery shopping nothing too wild or too big just to get some stuff for meals for the next couple nights um, Megan and I typically like alternate and she said it was her week, but I was like, no, <laughs> let me take it on this week. Let me get out of the house. Um, and then when I get back, I'm going to do a lot of cleaning and then tonight I'll buckle in and get some grading done. Much later now, 5.30, I went to Target and I was planning on going to Kroger right after and then I just started to feel so ill and was like, no, I got to get home. So I came home. I think that stress was still with me and I think that pineapple juice that I got from fresh time I drank like more of it today was is just like way too acidic I don't think my stomach could do it and like I know this but I was like what if, what if I just try uh short answer no I should not try um okay per should I give you dinner she just yells um so I'll show you guys a quick Kroger haul and i didn't get much at target i got a fun pair of pants so if they fit i'll show you guys those too they're on clearance um and also when i came back from target i just like made my bed because i washed my sheets today laid down and i just called zach my boyfriend and was like can you just like talk me off the ledge <laughs> i'm so stressed right now um but just like all this uncertainty and he was so sweet like i'm getting teary-eyed because he's he's just really nice um yeah that's it okay not too big of a haul but i was listening to a new podcast so i got more than i needed to just because i was vibing restock on eggs got some asiago bagels they're just a kroger brand but i've been craving these this bread that we got a while ago which was just so good we ate it with like these chickpea sandwiches and i didn't get stuff to make those sandwiches but maybe i should have i don't know just seemed right edamame i love edamame salsa green onions a zucchini squash to go in some veggie fajitas tonight peppers red onion that goes in there as well just some casio e pepe i know i'm not saying that right um sauce just for like a really easy meal maybe some frozen broccoli in there or something chickpeas these tortilla shells some chips two things of annie's because they were on sale more oregano some syrup i thought we had some but i can't find it in the pantry so restock on that 
baby carrots, green beans, bananas, an avocado, a lime, some noodles, tofu for like a little noodle tofu dish, and then a restock on these mini sprites. I love to have these on hand or mini ginger ales for when I'm feeling nauseous. I know I said I was going to use this evening to grade, but I've had chocolate chip cookies on my mind, so I gotta make them. I like to have a bunch of frozen cookie dough. It was chocolate chip cookies for a while, and then I had leftover M&M cookies from the Super Bowl. And just keep them in the freezer, and cookies are best fresh, so you just pop them in the oven in like two cookies at a time. One for me, one for Megan. Sometimes four if we each want two that night, feeling indulgent. And it's just like the best life hack. So let's bake some cookies. Here are the veggie fajitas with some salsa and Megan put some avocado on hers. Need to hang up all these sweaters, fold up this laundry, and then I will let myself get in bed. Okay, it is about 10.30, I need to wash my face, put on PJs so I can get in bed because I have a really long day tomorrow. Wednesdays are super long days for me because I teach my two sections back to back and then I tutor four hours in the writing center. But I'm kind of glad that I get like everything done in one day and I just like really buckle down on Wednesdays and I'm like, okay, we're, we're here. Um, and it makes for like a light Tuesday like today and a light Thursday. Happy Thursday. Have my coffee and my ember mug here and my laptop and we're gonna get to work. It's 8.50 right now. I just finished reading through a sort of like personal statement-ish type thing from my brother. My brother is actually a scientist, which is super freaking cool. And I was reading through some of his research. He was just like, does this make sense to you? Um, and it's always like really cool reading people's like research outside of a field of yours because you're like this is so wildly different um but also just like so freaking cool and that's like a big reason why i love writing center stuff anyway this morning i'm taking a bit of a break from the dissertation and i'm working on some youtube stuff i feel like i've really been grinding on the dissertation and i need a little bit of a break from that so i am actually working on planning out a video um which hopefully will go up soon because I hope I can film it this weekend, about how I write my dissertation. I've been thinking about making a video like this for a while in terms of how I go from like reading to brainstorming to outline to like doing the writing to revising to knowing what questions to ask my advisor and things like that. The whole goal of my channel is to be helpful for you all and to give like concrete strategies as well as like behind the scenes looks of what it's like being a grad student and i feel like this type of video has the potential to be like really helpful so i'm in like a bit of a creative mood so i'm just getting like the ideas flowing and i might watch some other videos for inspo specifically from kaylin apple or redhead academic uh her videos are wonderful and yeah making a little outline here 11 40 gonna do a quick fit check then gotta head out to the writing center so here is the fit. I feel like I've been seeing this, just like the top button cardigan, leaving the rest open. These wide leg jeans with the roll, and then these new Adidas, which I'm loving. Still breaking them in a little bit, can't lie, but I feel like they really go with everything. Let's go. Hello, good morning. It is 11.45 on Friday morning. I adjusted my hair and that put me way behind schedule, but I really, really needed to wash it because I went to Zach's house yesterday and we made like this stir fry tofu thing together and it just like smelled like oil and you know, food. So just taking this other oil and running it through to calm some things down. If you're thinking about getting the Shark Flex style, 
let this be the sign. It is incredible. Going to throw on some quick makeup. I'm not wearing this headband, so just to keep my hair out of my face. Quick makeup because I have to go to campus. Every so often our student chapter will ho of Rhetoric Society of America, RSA, will host panels or events and we're doing a works in progress panel where professors talk about the work that he's currently doing and a couple grad students are sharing. And I'm just attending, I'm not sharing. Um, but I need to meet beforehand to talk with the professor um, about a potential teaching opportunity if I'm teaching in the fall. I apply for fellowships and other things, um, so I'm hoping that I'm not here teaching in the fall, but you never know. I don't want to get all my bases covered. So I was asked if I would want to teach this new class. Um, but it's more of like a TA role than teaching. And I just don't know like what the labor entails. Because it sounds like you're in charge of four sections, but it's only treated as one. Because like my teaching load is a two one here, meaning I teach like two one semester and then one one semester. So I'm like, I'm meeting four times, but this only counts as like one. So I just gotta ask like what this like actually looks like. This weather is so weird. My skin can't decide if it's like, dry or oily, but that's just spring. Here is the fit check. Of course, gotta wear the new shoes. I'm really breaking them in. They're getting comfy and again, they go with everything. Wanted to wear these cargo pants, but they need to be steamed and have exactly three minutes to eat lunch. So didn't exactly have time. Megan and I had a little evening trip to TJ Maxx. Got some little slippers purely to leave at Zach's house when I'm there. And then we got this super cute painting to go in her bathroom. It's a little calico cat. It's so camp, as Megan said, but I love it. And then we had to get some Chipotle. Megan got a quesadilla. I don't lo love what I see from it, but... Hmm. We had a long car ride. It might have got a little soggy. But I got a bowl. <laughs>